Hi guys, it's time to finish off the organic chemistry and in this video we are focusing on the condensation polymers. Now condensation polymers, these two words actually we know that already, we discussed that already. First of all polymers, you know polymers are large molecules comprised of a lot of monomers and the monomers are able to join together to form large long molecules and we call that polymers. Uh, we learn about that when we talk about addition polymers. Uh, for all those addition polymers, the monomers are having the CC double bond, right? And we say that the CC double bond is able to open up and it has two covalent bonds each on the two carbon atoms. And if that uh, monomers come across with another monomers, they are able to join hand in hand and combine together to form a longer and longer and eventually forming the polymer, right? So. We, you, we, we know what polymers are. And what about condensation? Well, you know that condensation is a type of reaction where we have small molecules joined together to form a large molecule, and at the same time, we get rid of smaller molecules such as water, okay? For example, uh, esterification. Esterification is an example of condensation reaction where we have small alcohol molecule react with small carboxylic acid molecule to form a large ester molecule with the removal of water, okay? So that's why esterification belongs to condensation. Now, when these two words come together, actually, it's not too difficult to understand. You see this equation, we have the monomers and they join together to form a polymer, right? But it also produces some small molecules and very often it is water. Okay, so if the polymerization takes place in this way, we call this condensation polymerization. Okay, so we have two types of polymerization. We have addition polymerization, we have condensation polymerization. The difference is whether or not there are small molecules removed during this polymerization. Okay, now make sure you memorize the definition or at least you know how to describe what a condensation polymer is okay and in our DSC syllabus we have to know two examples which are polyesters and nylons so these two are condensation polymers so let's have a look now polyesters now polyester is not a single compound it is a class it is a family of uh, polymers okay and one of the examples is called polyethylene tetraethylene PET. Um, some of you probably may have come across this um, in some of the water bottle, or uh, you will see the PET printed on the bottle body. Uh, yes, this plastic is commonly used for water bottle, but it has other application. But most importantly, this is an example of condensation polymer it is an example of polyesters. So let's have a look at the monomers. Now, in this case, we have two different monomers, which is quite different than uh, addition polymer. For addition polymer, most of the time we have only one monomer, but this time we have two different monomers. Now, you see we have here a tetrathalic acid. Basically, it's a dicarboxylic acid, right? It has two carboxyl groups connected to a benzene ring. And we also have another monomer which is ethylene glycol, basically is a dialcohol or a diol, okay? Now the idea goes like this, as the reaction proceeds, they will undergo esterification or the condensation where the acid contributes the OH, the, uh, the alcohol contributes an H, and this gives rise to, of course, a water molecule. And when the OH and the H is gone, then the C and O is able to connect it together to form the ester bond or the ester linkage. Okay, so at this stage, we see we have a carboxylic acid and an alcohol joined together uh, to form this one. Now, you notice for this unit, for this unit, it still have a carboxyl group, it still have an alcohol group. So, this alcohol group is able to look for another 
dicarboxylic acid to undergo a further esterification in order to lengthen the chain. On the other hand, this carboxyl group can also look for another dialcohol molecule, again to perform an esterification to have an extra unit connected to this. All right. So this is how this can continuously lengthen until they form a huge molecule. All right. So this is how the condensation polymerization takes place. Okay. Now the key. The key concept here, if sometimes they ask you, hey, how can they uh, work as a condensation polymer? The key word is here. Notice the product still contains a carboxyl group and a hydroxyl group. So the key is you have to think whether this unit still have functional group available for further reaction. Okay, so that's the idea. So actually, the key concept in condensation polymerization, no matter you have two uh, monomers, three monomers, or even just one monomers, the key idea is whether or not uh, they still have functional group available after they are connected. Okay, I repeat. In order to tell whether or not uh, it can work as a condensation polymerization, is that once the two monomers or once the monomer undergo condensation join together to form a dimer or to form a unit uh, it is very important that the product still contain functional group allowing it to undergo further condensation reaction okay so this is the key concept now uh, here you see basically showing you that this is coming from here right this one is coming from here you see the carboxyl group able to connect it with another alcohol this one uh, this alcohol is able to connect it with another dicarboxylic acid and you see they keep repeat 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 and they form a polymer now to show the structure of a polymer we need to use uh, we need to get the repeating units and then we put the M at the bottom right corner right now here, it is one of the most challenging part for students is how to determine the repeating unit of a condensation polymer. Now for addition polymer, all we have to know is to look for the CC double bond and then we put anything that is connected to the CC double bond at the top, at the bottom and, and, and that is how you figure out the condensation polymer, uh, the repeating unit for addition polymer. Okay. But here for condensation polymer, the key is you need to show the structure of both monomers. Now you see, this is the repeating unit of uh, the polyester just now. You see, you have the dicarboxylic acid right here, right? This is the dicarboxylic acid. And this is the dialcohol. Dial. All right. So when you have to determine the repeating unit, make sure you are able to show the structure of uh, the polyester. Now, some people, okay, um, when they look into this uh, polyester, they may think, okay, can I do it this way? Can I can I draw my repeating unit this way? Can I draw my repeating unit this way? Now you see, uh, when you actually copy and paste this, this repeating unit over and over, you actually get the same polymer as what we have here, right? Basically, you can think about the, the, the frame kind of shift a bit to the right hand side, then we have this one, okay? However, this is wrong, this is wrong, okay? it is not acceptable in DSC. The reason is because your repeating unit must be able to reflect the true structure of all the monomers involved. In this case, people will be thinking, okay, um, are we having like uh, an aldehyde reacts with the benzene, right, at this end, right? Like an aldehyde reacts with the benzene, not 
the case, right? The reaction should take place between a carboxyl group and an alcohol group, not between an aldehyde and a benzene, definitely. So, so that's why um, this is how we show the repeating units, okay? Uh, you would expect to see a difference in the hydrocarbon part. Next time you may come across a polyester with maybe uh, two carbon, three carbon, four carbon in the middle, but uh, the majority of the case it would be uh, carboxylic acid and alcohol. Okay, so that's the idea. Uh, the formula of the polymer must include the structures of both monomers in this case. Okay. Now let's look into the next page. We have the chemical equation. The chemical equation. Uh, you have the dicarboxylic acid and the dialcohol. So N dicarboxylic acid reacts with N uh, dialcohol to form uh, a polymer with N repeating unit. That makes a lot of sense. But here, A, water. Okay, water. So the number of mole of water is 2N minus 1. Hmm. Now, first of all, why is it 2N? Why is it 2N? Now, the reason is quite simple because. For each monomer, it has two functional groups, right? So each functional group can undergo condensation with the other monomer's functional group. So basically, this OH reacts with this H to form a mole of water. This OH can react with this H to form another mole of water. So that's why for N mole of dicarboxylic acid and N mole of dialcohol, it is able to form two N moles of water. So you understand why 2n, but why is it 2n minus 1? What does that 1 come from? Uh, why, why there is like minus 1? The reason is because we are forming a polymer chain, not a polymer ring. Do you get it? So it's like after you form the polymer, you have a long, 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 long polymer. But because it is a chain, so you expect to see at one end of the terminal, you still have the carboxylic acid and one end of it still have the hydroxyl group, okay? So that's why this carboxyl group and this ethanol at the terminals, they are not undergoing condensation reaction. So one more water should be, uh, should be taken away from the equation. Now, if uh, the two terminals functional group reacts, it will form a ring, it will form a ring, right? But the polymers usually is a straight chain rather than a ring, so that's why uh, we do 2n minus 1 here, okay? All right, so for physical property of polyester and its uses, now, again, the physical property, we have to look into the intermolecular force because after all, even they are polymers, they are still having a simple molecular structure, okay? So for polyester, because the polymers still have the ester functional group and ester functional group are polar, so between polymer chains, now pay attention, we are talking about two polymer chains, chain one, chain two, all right? Between the chains, we have uh, when the wild force, when the wild force, okay? And this when the wild force should be stronger than that of polyethene, right? Because polyethene, they are not polar, but here it is polar. Okay, so that's why polyester is quite strong, relatively strong, tough, and at the same time it's smooth. So it makes it suitable for making drinking bottles and also making clothes. A lot of our clothes is made by polyester. Okay, polyester. Okay, so that's the idea. Now, another one, which is more difficult, we call it nylon, nylon, okay? So nylon is like this one, in Chinese, okay? Again, it's a direct translation from the English pronunciation. Uh, in this case, actually it's very similar to the polyester. Uh, it has two monomers here, but this time uh, we have a dicarboxylic acid and a diamine, diamine. So instead of dialcohol, we have diamine. Okay. Um, by the way, these names you need to know how to name it. Okay. You need to know how to name it. So this one, 
uh, diamine is at zinc, 1, 6 diamine. For amine groups and also just now the alcohol, the hydroxyl group, you need to specify the position. However, for carboxylic acid, you don't have to. You just put down like at zinc di, di, as in dioic acid, okay? Just like that, it should be fine, okay? Well, but then the one with benzene, you have to specify because benzene, the, the carboxyl group could be at any position on the benzene ring, okay? But if it is a straight chain, uh, dicarboxylic acid, you don't have to specify the position. It must be at the terminals, okay? Now, uh, when they undergo colonization polymerization, it's actually quite similar. They undergo condensation reaction, so the carboxylic acid provides the hydroxyl group, uh, the amine provides the H, so they form a most of water here, and basically, uh, after getting, getting rid of these two uh, parts, the C and the N, join together to form amide bond, or the amide linkage, okay? Uh, similar to polyester, after you form this product, this unit still have a carboxyl group and a amino group. So these two are able to undergo further condensation with other monomers to increase the chain length. Okay? Now here, the product still have a carboxyl group and a, sorry, amino group here. I make a mistake here. As a functional group, amine as a functional group should be called amino group. Amino group. Okay? So, uh, you see, again, similar uh, diagrams showing you that uh, this product from here is able to undergo further condensation uh, with other monomers and therefore increasing the chain length. Again, the structure, uh, sorry, uh, the, the repeating unit, you must be able to show the structure of the two monomers. Okay, so you see, uh, we kind of cut it at the amide bond. Did you notice? We cut it at the amide bond. Okay. That's the idea. Now, uh, down here you see 9066 polymer. Now what do you mean by 66? Now this is something that is exclusive for, for uh, uh, linol. We don't have this one for polyester. Now here, 66 is actually talking about the number of carbon in each of the monomer. Okay, so here, this one means, okay, 6 carbon in dicarboxylic acid and this one is like 6 carbon in the diamine okay um, that basically tells you that for nylon it has different combinations it has different uh, number of carbon in the monomer you can have nylon 6 6 you can have nylon 4 6 if this is 9 on 4, 6, then like 4 carbon in the dicarboxylic acid, right? Um, you can have like 9 on, maybe 6, 4, oh, so sensitive, ah, maybe 9 on, maybe 6, 8, something like that. So it can have different variations, and obviously the polymer have different uh, properties, okay? Now, uh, for chemical equations, uh, similar idea, n moles of dicarboxylic acid reacts with n moles of diamine to form uh, polymer and also 2 minus 1, uh, 2 n minus 1 water. Okay? Now, for physical property, again, very similar discussion. Uh, it is talking about uh, the intermolecular force. Now, notice this time, uh, because of the A my functional group, it is able to establish hydrogen bond, hydrogen bond between the polymer chain. Okay. The hydrogen bond is formed from the oxygen atom of the amide group and the hydrogen committed to the nitrogen of the amide group of another polymer chain. All right. So this hydrogen bond, you can tell, is very strong. That makes nylon an extra strong polymer. Extra strong polymer. So you see, nylon is tough and has high tensile strength. So usually it is used for fishing ropes or the tennis racket strings. Okay. Um, for some particular nylon, it can be used to make Kevlar. Now, Kevlar is the material used to make a bulletproof vest, like the, the, the police force, they wear the bulletproof vest to protect themselves against bullets. Uh, so those are made by a special type of 
polyamer or, or, or nylon, you can put it this way. Okay. Now down here, this is something uh, extra for nylon. Uh, like I said, nylon has uh, different combinations. We can have nylon 6, 6, nylon 4, 6. So the question is, which one is stronger? Which one is stronger? Which one is tougher? Um, now, a lot of students may think, oh, of course 6, 6, la, because 6, 6 is larger, so larger molecular size, stronger, uh, Van de Waals force, and higher melting point, blah, blah, blah. Now here, bear in mind, we are talking about polymers, and polymers, they have long chains, right, long chains. So when we have to compare between two polymers, we must have the two polymers of more or less the same chain length. Okay, if they are not of the same chain length, we cannot actually compare fairly. You understand? So, in this case, we are assuming that they are of the same chain length, and then we ask the same question, which one is stronger? If you look at this diagram, okay, I'll try to zoom out a little bit, okay? Now this one, we have 966, 9064, uh, so there's equal length, you see equal length. So, again, when it comes to the strength, it depends on the strength of intermolecular force, in this case the hydrogen bond. So can you like count how many hydrogen bonds are there for 9066? So you can see for one chain, you can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 hydrogen bonds. Right? For equal length, but it is 9046, then it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 hydrogen bonds. Okay, so that means for the same length, nylon 46 is actually having more extensive hydrogen bond than that of nylon 66. So that's why actually nylon 46 is stronger or is tougher. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay, so practice question. Of course, the old drill, pause the video, attempt those questions, and then we check the answers, all right? Okay, let's have a look. We have two condensation polymer. One is called PET, PET, we talked about that before, and this one is polylactic acid, polylactic acid, okay? Now, first of all, identify the two monomers involving in the formation of PET. So very often they give you the polymer or the repeating unit and they want you to deduce the monomers. So of course you know that um, it's a condensation polymer. So the ester bond, the ester bond, sorry, the ester bond give you a lot of uh, clue. So the ester bond is over here. So if you cut it open, if you cut it open, then you will have this one and this one. Okay, so you will have a Dicarboxylic acid. Make sure you give them back the uh, the OH and the H because we are talking about the monomer. Okay. Okay. Write down a chemical equation for the polymerization, forming PET, forming PET. Okay. So the equation. We have the N of this, N reacts with N, okay, for me, you can just repeat, or you can just copy that one from here, okay. Make sure you put down N here, plus uh, 2N minus 1 water. 
Okay. So that's the equation. Okay. Now C. Identify the monomer involved in the form the in forming PLA polylactic acid. Now um, for polylactic acid, if we look at here, so does it look like it has two monomers? Actually, it doesn't. It doesn't have two monomers. It only has a single monomer. Um, why do I able to deduce? Is because I cannot find any ester bond. I cannot find any ester bond within the repeating unit. Just now, what I did is I look for the ester bond and then I cut it open. Then I'm able to deduce that I have two different monomers. Okay, but here. I can't find the ester bond. So probably this one is having just one monomer, but it has two functional group. Okay, so here with a C double bond O, probably it is a carboxylic acid, and here probably is a hydroxyl group. So actually the monomer here, so this is the monomer, this is the monomer, just one single monomer. Now, remember, for condensation polymers, it does not necessarily have just, uh, it does not necessarily have two uh, monomers. It could be just one monomer. Again, the key concept is when the monomers undergo condensation to form a product, the product still have the functional group there, allowing it to undergo further condensation. Like this is the key concept. Uh, it can be achieved by two different monomers, it could also be achieved by just one single monomer, okay? So here, explain why both polymers are considered as uh, condensation polymers. So here is to explain using the definition, right? So we will say both, okay, undergo condensation to form polymer with the removal of small molecule such as water okay so the key is the key is removal of small molecules such as water okay explain why both polymers should not be used in highly acidic or highly alkaline medium. Okay? Uh, yeah, for polyester, we cannot use it in highly acidic or high, highly alkaline medium. The reason is because, after all, they are esters, right? They are esters. See, there is an ester bond here. This one, you may not see it very uh, 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 obviously, but once you think about just like copy and paste once, then you already have the ester bond. So basically, these two polyesters has a bunch of ester bond within the chain. And what happens when you have uh, ester together with highly acidic or highly alkaline medium? Of course, hydrolysis could take place. Okay, so we say that uh, hydrolysis of polymers uh, would occur. At the ester bond, okay, which will damage the structure of the object made by the polymer. Okay, so you must mention about the hydrolysis or curse. Okay because it is a polyester, because it has an ester bond, okay? And why is this hydrolysis problematic? It's because it will damage the object. It will damage the object, okay? If like you are using it as a bottle, as a bottle, then the bottle may be, it may be dissolved due to hydrolysis and therefore the content inside leak out not a good idea okay all right next one 
Next question, we have Kevlar. It's a type of polyamide, polyamide. And it can be used as the bulletproof vest. I did talk about that just now. Uh, name the monomers with the amine group according to IUPAC nomenclature. Okay, so amine group. So we will talk about diamine, diamine. So this is a benzene, right? So we will put down benzene 1, 4, diamine. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? Benzene 1, 4, diamine. Name the bond connected the two monomers together during polymerization. So obviously, because it's polyamide, right? So the bond connecting it must be amide bond. Amide bond, okay? A state of repeating unit of Kalfenar. So um, basically, we have the amine here, right? I should use another color, but anyway. Just to show you how to put down the repeating unit, uh, which include the, the structure of the two monomers. Now, don't put down the N here. Don't put down the N here because it's repeating units. If you put down the N, it will be the polymer. Okay? Now D, explain in terms of attractive forces why Kevlar has very high tensile strength. Okay, so of course we need to talk about the type of force that it has. Now we will say that because okay, the uh, we we'll say strong hydrogen bond, strong hydrogen bond can be formed extensively among polymer chain okay due to the presence of amide group okay it's a strong hydrogen bond okay I think the key is you mentioned about the type of force and also talk about uh, the functional group responsible for forming such a strong hydrogen bond okay and lastly we have two line on line on x and y so which one is more suitable to make large fishing nets now of course when you make large fishing nets it must be strong and tough so you're choosing the one that is stronger, that is tougher. Now in this case, can you tell which one is nylon? I mean, can you tell uh, the number? Different nylon have different numbers, right? So nylon XC is nylon 64. Ah, very sensitive polymer. And this one is nylon 66, right? 66. Okay? And we will actually choose nylon X. Okay, so you will explain since it has a shorter repeating unit. Okay, so for the same okay polymer length, okay, nylon X can form more extensive hydrogen bond then nine on Y okay more extensive stronger hydrogen bond okay because it has a shorter repeating unit right and we also try to compare the polymer when they are talking about similar or equal polymer length Otherwise, you can't compare. Otherwise, you can't compare. Okay. So uh, that's it for the condensation polymer. Uh, I understand it is quite difficult for the first time because of the polymer being so complicated in the structure. And usually, when it comes to ester and amide, students will struggle because it is involving more complicated functional group. Uh, 
uh, more complicated equation. So my advice is you try to read it over a couple of times, get used to uh, how the reaction goes, recognize the pattern. It is how, actually this is how we do chemistry, right? Keep doing practice, look for patterns, and once you can observe the patterns, you will get the hang of it, okay? So that's the idea. So that's it for today. Bye-bye.